Hi everyone, and welcome to this latest video. So, uh, if you're a subscriber to the channel, you'll probably know that already that I've done a multi-part series on building the SSFX 100 motion platform. Um, that's had loads of views, um, gained us loads of subscribers, and I think hopefully, anyway, helped uh, a fair number of people build their own low-cost, high-performance sim racing motion system. Uh, it certainly seems from what I've seen on uh, Facebook pages and stuff that the number of people building the system has shot up in recent times. I think the more people that build it, uh, get it finished, get it working and rave about it, encourages even more people to take it up and start building. Um, one of the last videos I did on it we addressed a little issue with supply of aluminium profiles and I sorted out a, uh, an alternative supply which was a bit more readily sourced. Um, but this is going to be a shorter series on building an alternative actuator that's um, got the same level of performance. The parts should be easier to get and importantly uh, a bit cheaper and 3d printing should be a lot quicker you should be able to make sort of more solid parts in the same amount of time so for those of you that have subscribed and uh, seen that I was making regular videos on topics like this and also um, other sim racing type um, topics uh, not been very active since about Christmas and that's primarily due to uh, moving house and moving workshop um, so apologies but hopefully now I should get back into making a few more videos um, on different particularly DIY construct parts for your sim racing rig type topics so we've moved house and we now live halfway up a mountain so I've come up the top of the garden today to chill out for a little bit and go through this video. Um, right, so the difference with this new actuator is that instead of being made out of 100 by 100 alley profile, which is only available from a couple of sources, or the, the correct one with the sort of right internal detail to put a slider in, only available from a couple of sources, and one of those sources in Germany seems to be uh, unreliable, uh, not very communicative, which wasn't my experience to be fair. Uh, I, I felt they were quite good, but a lot of other people really struggled. Uh, maybe it's because they don't really want to be doing this kind of a work or there's a language barrier or whatever, um, but it became sensible, sensible for people to switch to the item 24 um, 100 by 100 profile which meant changing the 3d uh, printed parts a little bit blah blah blah, blah. Um, but this profile that you see before you is 80 by 80 which is something that I picked up uh, at the start of the first lockdown for Covid in March of 2020 I felt that there must be a way of making use of it's more commonly available it's a fair bit cheaper. Uh, the only problem is obviously it's not as big, so the, the slider detail and the bearing and the ball screw for the linear um, for the ball screw or the ball nut for the ball screw, should I say, um, from the standard SFX 100 doesn't fit. But I felt that there must be an alternative that that would work. Um, it got put on the back burner a little bit with other projects. Um, but then, it, doing a search, it, uh, I saw that somebody else had done, had sort of solved the problem and put the details on a blog. Uh, now I'll put the link to his page uh, in the description so you can go and check it out and give his page a little bit of love. I think he does some racing pr products and some sim racing products, um, so it might be worth checking that out. <coughs> um, I'm hoping to provide a more detailed uh, and refined 
description for how to build the actuator and then John's page. So, yeah, so back to the actuator. So in this first part, we're just going to go through uh, the differences and I'll give you the list of parts that you'll need to buy and where to buy them from. Um, so you can get started in later videos when I've got my bearings and ball screw and stuff come through from China. We'll go into building the actuator up. But really and truly, in essence, it's the same as the SF, the standard SF, SFX100, uh, which all my other videos cover in great detail, so you can check those out. Uh, this uses the same motor, uh, same servo motor, same drive system, everything. You can use this with the Arduino SFX100 uh, electric, electronics, or you can use the Thanos controller. Everything apart from uh, the bits that you see at the moment and the uh, lead screw, the way the ball nut works on the lead screw, it's the same as the standard SFX100. Um, now this has been dubbed the SFX80 because of the 80x80 80 80 profile, um, but that could be confusing because the SFX100 also had a 100mm of stroke. So I think we're going to call this the SFX100 dash 80 by 80 just to make things super clear. Okay, so the ben uh, other benefits are the 3D printed parts are a lot smaller, so they print quicker. Uh, I printed this, uh, the top cap you see, in around half the time of printing the standard one. Uh, not only that, I was able to print it in uh, solid um, in that time as well, so it's a lot stronger, more sturdy component. Now I'm hoping eventually to have the top and bottom caps machined from Solid Alley bar and I'm hoping to be able to provide a completed built up actuator for around the same price as it would cost to build, um, like to home build, DIY build a standard SFX100 actuator. Um, I'm a little way from being able to do that at the moment and obviously that spoils the concept of the DIY approach for some people so I'm going to give you the details on how to build this actuator yourself. So on this end uh, a few things that are different from the SFX100. The uh, linear bearing that goes on the bottom that has the shaft running through it on this is put externally and leaves you with a shorter cap. Uh, that's just a, a factor of how much space is available inside um, to mount the bearing. don't believe it makes any difference to the structural integrity of anything. Um, the end cap for the motor mount, uh, the motor mount doesn't screw into the plastic like on the SFX100. It's got captivated nuts inside there, so I think it's a stronger, uh, more fail safe um, system than the, than the original. Um, the other good, oh, the slider comes in multiple parts, which means your Z printing, uh, which is your like the slowest part of um, 3D printing is reduced. You can print these with only a, that's the tallest Z height. Um, so you can print these quicker and it requires to be in multiple parts anyway because it, the ball screw has a dowel on it instead of the flange. So you have to be able to sort of clamp around the, you have to have, to have a keyway in one of your, in your centre part of your slider and then you have to be able to clamp the uh, ball nut uh, from the top and bottom. But that, you know, that's no problem. Um, and allows you to do other things with the slider, like um, recess the head of the screws and have captivated nuts so you're not relying on uh, plastic threads. All things that are a little bit more reliable, maybe, than the uh, way the original was done. Um, but primarily of interest to me is the fact that it's that much smaller, lighter and cheaper uh, without s s 
well, in theory anyway, without sacrificing any reliability. So um, the supply of the ball screw, uh, the fixed bearing at the top, uh, the linear bearing at the bottom, and the hollow shaft, that's all the same as the SF... Uh, apart from the ball screw, that's all the same as the SFX100. And the supplier for those I've put in the description of the video is Amy Chen from China. Uh, everyone these days is using her. She's really responsive. I'll give you a link to her on Facebook so you can make contact. Um, at the end of the video, I'll do a screenshot that shows uh, the part description that she sent me of all the bits that you need for this. Um, so when you contact her, you can just ask for that. Um, she's also given me the prices for it, uh, which... I'll either put at the end of the video or I'll put in the description or both. Um, but yeah, for now, that's. I uh, just wanted to introduce the project. Until those parts arrive from Amy, I can't go any further and build the actuator up. Like I say, you can check out my other videos. Um, if you want to make a start on building this, then go ahead and uh, order those bits from Amy. And you should get them in a similar sort of time frame to me, uh, by which time we'll be up and running with the next video. Uh, if you want to drop me a line and ask about like the solid uh, alley machine components, then please do so. You can um, I'll put my email address, and my Facebook page, contact details in the de video description. Uh, if we get enough of a sort of buying group together, then maybe I can make that happen quicker and cheaper. Uh, but until then, thanks very much for watching. Uh, please hit the like button if you found the video interesting. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to carry on and uh, see more of this uh, build topic and the other things that I talk about on the channel. And uh, obviously check out the other videos that we've done. So until next time, thanks very much for watching.